hi guys welcome back to the channel hi baby um we're just gonna talk and do a wig review and uh hopefully enjoy the content um so i don't know if you guys are aware of this but i'm a really huge sports fan and like what the what what tim tebow what are you what i like oh my goodness what are you what, like what is the world coming to i mean what is happening tim tebow what are you doing so i just got finished watching skip and shannon and like Sh shannon is so just over this whole narrative of tim tebow like he's just over it and like i'm just like does he have a point does he not have a point because shannon's over it skips all for it and i'm just like i kind of see both sides so um this wig review here this is phoenix i bought it from glamour tress she is a wig that has also made its rounds on youtube but i've never seen anybody do the rose gold pink um so this is a dark root rose gold in the um style phoenix this is what her stock card looks like and i also bought her in um sand dark root something blonde sand but i don't know where the wig is as you can clearly see it's like I've got to like redo all this stuff and like get that organized. But, um, so cap construction is, you know, your standard two, one, and your, um, straps. So I'm just going to try both of them on, um, while we talk about Tim Tebow. So Tim Tebow came out of the league from the University of Florida. He's a Heisman Trophy winner. Um, he played football for Urban Meyer. He was his head coach. Um, led him to a championship. I'm sorry, two championships, I think. Down at the University of Florida, he came out of the league. His his Heisman Trophy win like hyped him up, but everybody talked about him not really being able to be a complete quarterback because of his um, the way he was throwing and the way like it just it wasn't going to change. Like how he threw in college was not going to last in the NFL. So like long story shorter. He came in, he did okay. Um, he was supposed to go to the Jets, but then that didn't work out well. They chose Mark Sanchez as their quarterback, who was an, an abysmal quarterback. Um, and then he went to the he went to the Denver Broncos, where like Skip's whole like claim to fame for Tim Tebow is like he beat out, you know, Ben Roethlisberger in like a, a playoff win. Um and took like the the Denver Broncos, which were one and four at the time, to like the playoffs. Or, you know, so like he could play. I think a lot of things went really, really right all at the same time for Tim Tebow for that whole stretch of things to happen. Um, but no one would sign him, so he went to go to the um, MLB and ended up playing in like Double A um, for baseball, and then. Uh, basically left the nfl um and has, hasn't been able it hasn't been training playing doing anything for the nfl so and this isn't like a knock on tim tebow because i really like tim tebow as a person um so my brother i have seven siblings one of my siblings is mentally disabled he had he's 41 years old and he's got the mind of like a two and a half year old and he will for the rest of his life um and so he he goes to this program where other mentally disabled people are with him and every year he goes to this dance that tim tebow hosts all around the world for mentally disabled people um it's like a, a night of star i think the last event, the last dance was called like a night among the stars or something like that um where all these mentally disabled um adults came together and it was like their prom but it was all around the world so like kudos to tim tebow for doing that like that's that's insane like it's it's amazing we as caregivers to our mentally disabled siblings um you know it's it's a tireless job and it's a thankless job but these kids are some of the happiest people in the world i, I keep i don't want to say kids because they are adults but they have the mind of children and we, we, we treat them as children. I definitely treat my brother as a child. I bathe him and he can't ever drive anywhere on his own. He definitely can't live anywhere on his own. He's got structured bedtime, all that kind of stuff. And he's 41. 
So I appreciate Tim Tebow for like putting a spotlight on, um, you know, the, this sector of human beings who unfortunately, you know, things happen in the womb where they came out a certain way and this is their normal. And so it's a, it's a thankless job, but I absolutely wouldn't trade it for anything. Growing up with a mentally disabled brother um, taught me humility and grace and gratitude. And, you know, a lot of people pre-internet, pre-social media um, didn't really know how to talk to, um, go about, um, you know, having any form of like a relationship or um with mentally disabled people sometimes people would even go so far as to say they were afraid of them but with social media and with like bringing the forefront to mentally disabled um you know people it, it allows you to be able to be like they're just like us you know just on a smaller scale of iq level and you know they just want to be talked to and they don't know any better they don't really know what's happening like that um my brother daniel um he goes to Kroger and he literally knows everybody there. Everybody there loves to talk to Daniel at Kroger. Um, they all know that he's special needs, but like just the interaction of like, if you see them out, say hi to them. They don't, they don't, they don't get, they love it. You know, they're, they don't understand that like, it might be like weary or you might be weary. But anyways, Tim Tebow hosts like this, this like mentally disabled prom for all of these mentally disabled um, humans um, every year um, all around the world. And so I like Tim Tebow. I think he's got a really strong sense of faith about him. Um, but you're coming back into the NFL after 10 years and they're trying to get him to play tight end. You won from quarterback to tight end. Now, this is the thing that like bothers me. A, we all know Tim Tebow's only getting a shot in Jacksonville because of Urban Meyer. Like, let's just not be shy about it. We're not going to beat around the bush about it. We're not going to pussyfoot around it. We all know that's the only reason on planet Earth that you're getting a shot in the NFL is because Urban Meyer was your coach. You guys have a relationship. The relationship has stood the test of time. And he got hired as the head coach of Jacksonville. And now he's bringing you out of retirement. I don't know how many men could dedicate their life because if you're trying to make it to the NFL, you know that from very early on, your chances of even making it to the NFL are slim to none anyway. Um, you have to withstand injury. You have to withstand somebody beating you there. You have to withstand, you know, the right coach being at the right time, being able to um, market you properly. You have to go to the right school. You have to... Um, I mean, look at all these people who were supposed to go to the, who were trying to go to the NFL and COVID happened. Like all, like so many things in time. That's really, really timing is everything. And like what's written in the universe is going to happen because yes, even if you did everything correctly and attended every single practice and ate everything you were supposed to and didn't go out um, past the hours of like, I don't know, 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. because that's where most crime happens, I think. And even if you... Even if you went to every training camp and even if you had every, if you had the best doctors and you had the best um, chefs preparing your food, you had the best, you had the, be you know, you had the best gymnasiums, you had the best coach strength training you. Even if all those things went right in your life. Yes, my sweet girl. There's still a possibility that somebody may have beaten you out or is better than you or is faster than you or had an opportunity or, you know, you missed a red light on the way to a practice and somebody else, um, made that red light and so a coach that was trying to scout you ended up scouting somebody else because you missed a red light and you had to hang out at that red light but that coach was scouting somebody else and had to go because he had a lunch meeting with another coach so he couldn't see you even if ever like I, that's what i'm saying like timing really is everything but this is such a really pretty color this is rose gold um oh my god she's gorgeous i love 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 love, love. even if all that happens like the chances of you still making the nfl they're still very, 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 very slim. Now, now, if you do all those things correctly, it's a, it's a higher probability that you make the NFL. And so Tim Tebow was afforded those opportunities and those uh, uh, abilities to be able to go to the um, to make it to college and to go to a, a, a Division One college that was marketed well, that had money, that could uh, help market him to the NFL. He, he didn't make it. He wasn't good enough, you know. 
unfortunately what they wanted he couldn't provide and so now he's coming back into the nfl and they're trying to market him as a tight end now shannon sharp is a hall of famer tight end and like he was just talking about how all of these men work all of their lives for this one position tim tebow has worked his entire life to be a quarterback and now you think you're going to go up against all these people who have been working their entire lives competing their entire lives as tight ends and you think you're honestly getting ready to be able to compete in a new position that you've, I guess, out of the blue, learned how to play. I don't know. You were marketed as a quarterback. So it's just like, ugh. is nepotism about family or is it about like friends too? Because, um, I mean, Jesus, could this be like any more glaring of a neon sign about like what's really going on in the NFL? And it's just like, <clears throat> unfortunately for tim tebow and again i don't dislike tim you know he's making these relationships that he has kept work um he may have been he may have seriously been missing the nfl for the last decade he may have been crying himself to sleep for the last decade trying to you know figure out a way to get back into the nfl I i'm not knocking tim tebow it's just, it's unfortunate because I look at Tim Tebow as a man of privilege. Um, not even by his skin color, but just like you, these opportunities hardly come knocking twice. And it's like, I, you know, you were, you went to the best school, one of the best schools for football. And, um, you kept in touch with this coach and there was so much hype around Tim Tebow, blah, 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 blah. Um, a lot of teams in the NFL wouldn't even deal with him because there was so much like Tim Tebow hype. They felt like it was going to be a distraction to the locker room. And it's like, I respect the fact, Tim Tebow, that you busted your ass to get where you have. You absolutely have. You needed training and everything like that just like every other kid to be good at football you perfected your craft as well as you thought you did you didn't perfect it enough by nfl coaches standpoints but you perfected your craft enough to get it to the nfl and that's an accomplishment within itself but there are so many men boys young adults who are killing themselves to get to the nfl and not only <laughs> not only did you make it to the nfl once but you left the NFL for a decade and this social hierarchy that you've, uh, that, that, you know, has been allotted to you based on, you know, the life that you lived has given you the ability to be able to go to the NFL, fail by all intents and purposes, leave and then come back and ab actually think or be led to believe that you actually can make it at the top tier level of a sport in another position <sighs> like the audacity that like the privilege to me that that screams it's like the tight end position like it's first of all it's it's not even just like the speed, it's the strength, it's the ability to withstand being like hit. It's the the fact that like these are routes that are specifically run, for, like all this kind of stuff. Like it's just like, my goodness, my, like people have, again, dedicated, men have dedicated their entire lives to a certain position. You got kicked off the island and then you came back and think you're going to play another position at the top tier level. And, and football is, in my personal opinion, the most demanding um, professional sport on a body. I could be wrong. Um, I'm trying to think if there's another sport, maybe rugby. Um, but football, in my opinion, it, it demands the most out of the human body. And physically and i just like i you know this is one of the reasons why you know my mother says don't burn bridges because you never know when you're going to need somebody and i mean it's, it's very clear and obvious and maybe this is a stretch of this um old, old adage because tim tebow and urban meyer have such a great relationship but like this just also does go to show like 
you may, we didn't know 10 years ago that Urban Meyer was going to um, be asked to be a head coach in the um, NFL draft. We didn't. And, you know, Tim Tebow has kept that relationship and it ended up serving him again. It's just to me, I mean, good luck to Tim Tebow. I don't ever want to see anybody fail. But like, what about those other teams and what about those other men in the locker room who have made the team, who have dedicated their entire career to being a tight end? And here comes dude off the boat because of his relationship with the head coach. And you think you about to get my spot and you just started playing tight end five seconds ago. Like, I don't know how this is going to mesh in the locker room. I don't, I mean, people have, I mean, are in an uproar about it. Um, I, I don't, again, disclaimer, this is nothing against Tim Tebow personally. I think he's a cool dude. And I think he has <coughs> used his relationships well. He hasn't burned the bridges. He's kept in contact. He possibly has probably kept in shape. Uh, I hear a lot of sportscasters say you can't get into NFL shape. The only way to get into NFL shape is to play in the NFL. So he's been out for 10 years. So you're not in NFL shape. You're not in game time shape. You're not. And again, you're going up against dudes who have perfected this craft in this position over the last three decades of their life. And here you think you coming in and it's just about to be all gravy. I mean, unless they know something that I don't and he's, you know, he played tight end when he was like a, when he was in high school and then he grew and they were like, we want you as, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm shocked. I'm very shocked. And I just, I, I feel bad for the people who, are possibly missing an opportunity because they don't have the money to be able to go to a top tier school and have a coach with the reputation of Urban Meyer to be able to market them to get to uh to the NFL. And I'm not saying it, it was easy for Tim Tebow to get to the NFL. I'm not saying that Tim Tebow didn't work. I'm saying it's a lot easier to get there if you go to a Division One school that has games playing all the time and in prime locate in prime spots, it's a lot easier to get to the NFL if you're if you're marketed to a coach that has the respect um, and is lauded by the entire you know college system. It's a lot easier to get to the NFL when you have these connections to other to other people who have connections. You know the social hierarchy. My child, thank you. It's a lot, it's a lot like your road there. These coaches know who to talk to. These coaches know who not to talk to. These coaches know when these people are coming into town. These coaches have lunches and these coaches have meetings with these specific people. These coaches play golf. These coaches are friends with each other's family. These coaches know people and it's a lot. It makes your, it certainly helps you further along the road of getting there. If you already are in contact with these like social hierarchy people. And it's just like, if you're a struggling dude from like Detroit, Michigan, and you know, God blessed you with the ability to run fast, but that was it. You have to figure out how to get yourself noticed. You have to figure out, you know, how to survive on the streets of Detroit. You have to deal with the temptation of, you know, what if I don't make it and, the only life that I see around me are dope boys. Like, and they're telling me this is why I needed to be to be cool. And, you know, I'm trying my best to make it to the NFL, but they're telling me that, you know, I think I'm too good and I'm trying to survive. And I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a target by thinking I'm better than somebody else. I just know that God gave me this gift of speed, but I'm stuck out here in Detroit where there's nothing but drugs and, and death surrounding me. And, and I got to figure out the willpower to say no to all these things and get my ass to school and figure, I mean, it's just... It's, and those are like extreme situations, kind of, because I think a lot of people come from that. But it just makes your road to getting there. People are looking out for you. People people are looking out and doing things for you that you don't even know that they should be doing. All these things happen to propel you, to get you in a position that you're ready to step foot into college in the NFL. And it's just like... <sighs> Tim Tebow, you kind of had your shot, dude. And it didn't work. And it's just... 
again, maybe you they know something that we don't. And maybe he's been working as a tight end, like, all through high school, all through college. It's like a backup. I don't know. I'm... Anyways, this is Phoenix. In, um, is this in a 1 or a 1B? This is a 1. Um, silky textured with a light yakky. I'm 5'7 and a half, 5'8. Um, it has a little bit of a shine to it. Um, that's okay. All you gotta do is put some, um, dry shampoo on it if that's what you want, if you feel like it's too much. Um, it comes with baby hair. If you know me on this channel, I really don't like baby hair. I don't care for it. I think it's a very natural, like, work wig. Um, just very, very simple to just, like, throw on and go. The rose gold, I really like that one as well. Um, Do you feel like this washes me out a little bit? I haven't worn like a jet black in a long time. Um, and now that the sun's warming up and the, the, the my undertones are warming up, everything's just like getting warm. So um, I'd say it's bigger head friendly. Um, I don't have to adjust the straps or anything like that and I'm fine. So, but I have a small head. Um, So this is the rose gold and this is the one. So I think they're both stunning wigs. I absolutely think they're great. Um, so yeah, this is Phoenix. Um, I got her from, I think I got her from Glamour Tress and then um, it's by, it's by Outre and they're beautiful, beautiful units. Like I said, I, I bought like the dark root something blonde sand or something like that. I don't I don't know where it is though. It's somewhere around here. So if you see the picture for my thumbnail, it might I I might have three different pictures of like the one, the rose gold, and the um the blonde sand. You I just you know, I'll do have to do a separate video on on Phoenix with the sand. Um But you know, what do you guys think about the whole football thing? You know, am I dragging things into it that don't need to be dragged into it? Does it all work together? Is it all a huge conspiracy? Um, sh should we all just like sh say shut up? You know, how you get it is how you get it. Life's not fair. He was able to get it and he was lucky enough to be able to get it a second time. So, Tim Tebow, I, I hope I hope you do great. I, I really hope you shut the haters off and you let them know like you've been busting your butt. And a, an opportunity was awarded to you. You took it. Just like anybody else in a situation, an opportunity is awarded them. They take it and they don't ask questions because it may not come back around again. It just came back around again. So, uh, thank your lucky stars that like Urban Meyer is who he is um, and the clout that, you know, surrounds him because ain't nobody other team in the NFL was picking you up. I mean, it's laughable, actually. Nobody was about to pick you up, Tim Tebow. A decade, a decade removed from the NFL, really? Like, a, a decade removed? A decade? Come on, come on, man, come on. Okay, thanks guys for watching. Um, like I said, I think this wig's already been reviewed, but no one had. I hadn't seen anybody do it in, in rose gold, and then I was like, screw it, I'll just get a one. All right, my daughter's hungry. She's ready to go eat. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Okay, bye.